Father Returning Home by Dilip Chitre. This presentation has been prepared by Mrs. Sujata Ali, lecturer in Dharampet MPGO Memorial Science College, Nagpur. Introduction Father Returning Home focuses on a certain individual, a commuting father returning home from work in the Indian city of Mumbai. The atmosphere within the poem narrated by a son is rather gloomy and pessimistic. There is little emotion shown as the father ends another day at work and hurries back to a house that is not altogether a home. Dilip Chitre, a painter and filmmaker, as well as a poet, taps into his own father's biography and creates a powerful and imagistic poem. The speaker, closely observing the actions of the unhappy protagonist. Purushottam Chitre, his father, is said to be the inspiration for this poem as he migrated from his birth town of Baroda to Mumbai to try and better his life. In the poem, life is not so easy any longer. The father has become a figure of pathos and has lost his raisin day tray. About the poet Dilip Purushottam Chitre was one of the foremost Indian poet and critic to emerge in the post-independence India. He wrote in Marathi and English. He was also a teacher, a painter and filmmaker and a magazine columnist. He received the prestigious Sahitya Academy Award both for poetry as well as for his well-known translation work says Tuka, popular abhangas that is spiritual poems by Sant Tukaram. Exile, alienation, self-disintegration and death are observed to be the major theme of his works. The major themes in the poem include alienation, rootlessness, old age in a modern society, isolation, cultural identity, the generation gap and the future of the individual in the city. Father returning home. The first three lines. My father travels on the late evening train, standing among silent commuters in the yellow light. Suburbs slide past his unseeing eyes. Explanation. The poem begins with the speaker's description of his father returning home. The father is travelling in a late evening train after finishing his work for the day. Late evening train indicates that his father has to work for long hours so that it regularly gets that late for him to return home. The father is standing among the silent passengers in the yellow light inside the train compartment. This silent quality reflects a level of alienation between the father and his surroundings and that alienation will be a prominent concept within the remainder of the poem. The silent commuters are not friendly enough to converse with him or are engrossed among themselves. 
the yellow light creates a gloomy and dull atmosphere and does not promote any cheerfulness all these things further intensify his agony and make the journey monotonous the suburbs are sliding past the move train the notion that his unseeing eyes and not taking note of the physical surroundings the train bypasses furthers the sense of alienation but the poet's father has no intention to look at those he is unmoved by these scenes for he has seen those many a times and finds nothing new or interesting in it so the sliding landscapes also add to the sense of monotony his shirt and pants are soggy and his black raincoat stained with mud and his bag stuffed with books is falling apart his eyes dimmed by age fade homeward through the humid monsoon night the poet describes the pathetic appearance of his father as it has started to rain his father's clothes are all wet with the rain water and the black rain coat is covered in mud the bag he was carrying was stuffed with books is falling apart showcasing that no element of his current state is in good condition these lines are again indicative of the difficulties the poet's father has to face during his journey it gets even worse in the rainy season the black rain coat might indicate the lack of color in his dull life again his bag full of books hints that he was an educated and scholarly man not that unimportant that one might assume from his ordinary routine journey the poet gives us an impression of his father's age his eyesight is dimmed by his old age the father looks homeward with his low vision through the humid monsoon night in connection to the homeward there is fading which indicates further dimming than what age has already brought him and the humid monsoon night is a visual of heaviness dampness aggression and darkness when all of this is linked to homeward notions there is no reason to believe the father is eager for his homecoming the gloomy atmosphere also to the dullness of his life now i can see him getting off the train like a word dropped from a long sentence he hurries across the length of the gray platform crosses the line enters the lane his chappels are sticky with mud but he hurries onward explanation the poet's father gets down from the train here dilip chitre has used a fine simile in comparing his father to an unimportant word in a long sentence this is quite unique he says that his father gets down just like a word dropped from a long sentence the poet indicates how unimportant his father is to the crowd 
in between. It does not really make any difference whether he got down or not. He is of no significance to the rest of the world. After getting off the train, the father hurries towards his home. This hurrying onward is caused by poor weather rather than excitement to go homeward. He crosses the grey platform and the railway line and finally enters the lane. His sticky with mud chappals prove an obstacle and prevent him hurrying onward. The poet has used the word hurry twice to bring in a sense of escapism from the dull, humid atmosphere, grey platform and muddy streets when no one cares for him. He is seeking for some solace at his own home. Home again. I see him drinking weak tea, eating a stale chapati, reading a book. The second stanza of the poem, Father Returning Home, depicts a bland list of activities the father partakes in like drinking weak tea, eating stale chapati, reading a book. The tea being weak and the chapati being stale create an unpleasant atmosphere even while the father is tending to his own needs and they support the idea that the father feels unhappy and alienated from the world around him. The poet hints at how nobody cares for him even at home. But the man does not have any complaint with his tea or food as he is accustomed to it. On the other hand, he rather concentrates on reading a book while having his tea. He has probably given up on expecting more care and attention from his family members. He goes into the toilet to contemplate man's estrangement from a man-made world. Even while catering to his basic needs, his life is not pleasant or enjoyable and this speaks of his estrangement from a man-made world. Ironically, the world that the father currently resides in is of his own making as he goes forth to earn a living for the child watching him. This line nearly sums up the theme of the entire poem. The father is indeed aware of his estranged situation and yet hopes to find some support in the family when he hurries towards his home. But the hope is diminished as he reaches and finds the same indifference there. Moreover, the toilet might act as a symbol of how small his world has been. The toilet seems to be the only place the man has to go to contemplate over his loneliness. Coming out, he trembles at the sink, the cold water running over his brown hands. A few droplets cling to the graying hairs on his wrists. Explanation The father comes out from the toilet and goes to wash his hands at the sink. The speaker observed him trembling at the sink when cold water was running down his brown hands. His trembling 
might be due to his old age the coldness of the water it can also indicate how unstable he feels in his own life regardless of the stability he is providing for his child and also the fearful thought of his isolation and alienation from the rest of the world a few drops of water clinging to the gray hairs on his wrists may have greater implications water generally symbolizes life and gray hairs stand for the old age but we do not know whether the graying of hair is age related or due to the strain caused by the harsh and tough life lived by her that has taken a toll on his physical appearance his sullen children have often refused to share jokes and secrets with him he will now go to sleep the poet goes on to talk about the old man's relationship to his family members his bad tempered children refuse to share jokes and secrets with him the notion that the children have refused to include the father indicates the father wants to be a part of their jokes and secrets and that longing makes the division more heartbreaking since what the father truly wants seems out of his reach that said this clearly indicates they don't share a close and friendly association with their father rather they regard him as an outdated unwanted burden though he seems to be the only earning member of the family he will now go to sleep listening to the static on the radio dreaming of his ancestors and grandchildren and thinking of nomads entering a subcontinent through a narrow pass explanation we are in the final stage of the poem where we see the father going to sleep listening to the static on the radio and dreaming of his ancestors and grandchildren there is no goodness to be had in his current life with his alienation but oddly he finds closeness in realizing he is a small speck in his family's history just like his ancestors were and his grandchildren will be he also dreams of the people entering the indian subcontinent through the khyber pass in the ancient times thus the poem father returning home by dilip chitri sympathizes with the old neglected people in our society chitri has denounced the urban rootlessness and alienation no doubt his message is well delivered here this poem has given the poet a lot of respect and popularity through all these years figures of speech appearing in the poem explained in the next presentation fade homeward through the humid monsoon night line 7 in the above line the weather is humid and not the night the epithet or adjective is transferred from the weather to the night this figure of speech is therefore a transferred epithet 
second. Suburbs slide past his unseeing eyes. Line number three. There are two figures of speech appearing in this line. First, it is an alliteration as there is a repetition of the letter S. Secondly, it is also a synecdoche because the word unseeing is used to represent a part that is the eyes for the whole person that is the father. Third, standing among silent commuters in the yellow light. The figure of speech here is an alliteration as there is a repetition of the letter S. Fourth, like a word dropped from a long sentence. Line number nine. The figure of speech here is a simile as there is a direct comparison being made between the father who is getting off the train and an insignificant word being dropped from a sentence. He hurries across the length of the grey platform. Line number 10. The figure of speech here is a transferred epithet because the epithet grey is transferred from the old father to the platform. Next, his chapels are sticky with mud but he hurries onward. Line number 12. The figure of speech here is an alliteration as there is a repetition of the letter H. Home again, I see him drinking weak tea. Line number 13. This figure of speech is a transferred epithet because the epithet weak is being transferred from the father who is weak to the object that is the tea. The next figure of speech, eating a stale chapati, reading a book, line number 14. The figure of speech here is a synecdoche as chapati is a part which represents the whole that is the food eaten by the narrator's father. Next, man's estrangement from a man-made world. Line number 16. The figure of speech is an alliteration as there is a repetition of the letter M. Next, the cold water running over his brown hands. Line number 18. The figure of speech here is a synecdoche because a part that is the hand is representing the whole that is the father's body which is brown. Jokes and secrets with him line number 21. The figure of speech used here is again a synecdoche as a part that is jokes and secrets represents the whole that is quality talks or conversations that the children do not share on a daily basis with their father. Listening to the static on the radio dreaming. Line number 23. The figure of speech used here is an onomatopoeia which means that the sound that is static is in itself expressed in the word static. I certainly hope you enjoyed watching my presentation of this poem Father Returning Home by Dilip Chitri. Please do watch it and do like and subscribe to my channel Let's Learn to Love English by 
Mrs. Sujata Ali. Thank you once again and happy learning.